company that manufactures some of the sickest, quickest, and thickest luxury cars ever to come out of Europe. A company so well intertwined with BMW, most people don't even know the difference. But when this carbon crankshaft bearing badge rests next to the BMW symbol, Beamer boys and girls know it means business. <laughs> This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on Alpina. Hi, I'm James Pumphrey. It's an old rumor that humans only use 10% of the brain. That's not true. We use 100% of our brain 10% of the time. And maybe it's because we lack focus and energy. I don't know, I'm no brain doctor, but I do know that NOS energy drink gives me energy. And if you're a human, you need energy to do stuff. Like this kind of stuff. I think that's everything. Now, back to the show. Back in the 50s, Dr. Rudolf Boven Scheipen was running a typewriter company in a small town outside of Munich. He called it Alpina, and they were all about carriage returns and keystrokes. If you don't know what a typewriter is, Google Murder She Wrote Opening Credits. That's what a typewriter is. Dr. Boven Scheipen had a son. Burkhard, that he hoped would take over the family business one day, but Burkhard Ouch. had other plans. He had a passion for tinkering with automobiles. One of his first cars was a BMW 1500, which he got in 1962. The Beamer was a small and affordable commuter saloon, but he found it to be a little underpowered. He knew BMW's factory single carburetor setup was underserving the engine. So he developed a Weber dual carb setup that gave the 1500 a 15% bump in Hurst per. That brought it all the way up to 96 over the stock 80. Burkhart knew he was onto something. He figured he might not be the only one interested in getting some more power, baby. This Burkhart guy sounds like my brother for another mother. You know what I'm saying? Rude! In 1963, Burkhart started putting flyers on the windshields of BMW 1500s that he'd see on the street. The flyers read, for 950 Deutschmarks, you can have 20 more horsepower. This was back in the day when flyers weren't immediately thrown into the trash. People actually read them sometimes. Burkhart had coaxed enough power out of the 1500 to compete with BMW's new 1800. The flyers worked. He was able to get enough people to upgrade their 1500s that it got the attention of BMW sales boss, Paul G. Hanneman. You'd think that he wouldn't have taken kindly to a typewriter mogul's son tinkering with his beloved cars, but he was legit impressed, not only by his initiative, but also the quality really? of the work. Because you gotta have both. He was so impressed that he had BMW certify Burkhart's work, offering the full factory warranty on cars fitted with Alpina's carburetor system. This was the beginning of a long and unique relationship between Alpina and BMW. BMW, you are my best friend. You are my light. I promise to always be true, always be fun, and always sneak Rex table scraps. <laughs> <laughs> the automotive press of the day was skeptical at first, suggesting that the increase in power would lead to a decrease in reliability and longevity. But Burkhart thought if he could just get them to drive the car, it would change their minds. Um, I don't know, Burkhart. I'm pretty skeptical. Uh, here's the keys, you boob. Take a first spin. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wowzers! Now that is one spicy meatball. I'm an Italian-American press guy. Once the press got their hands on the Alpina-equipped 1500, their skepticism quickly wore off. Alpina was the real deal. A few years later in 1965, Burkhart was busy in his dad's shed, officially founding the Alpina company that we know and love. He began to experiment with crankshaft designs as well as forging, polishing, and stroking more ponies out of the BMW power plants, thus laying the foundation for the Alpina emblem that is still used today. Carburetors and crankshafts, baby. He kept tweaking and tuning BMWs through the late 60s, even entering the European Touring Car Championship in 1968.
Two years later, they would go on to win the whole thing in a BMW Alpina 2002 with Hans Stuck Jr. at the wheel. That same year, they also won at 24 Hours of Spa, Nürburgring, as well as the German Hill Climb Championship and some rallies. Burkhardt put a lot of effort into the touring car racing series and attracted the best drivers of the day. I'm talking James Hunt and Nicky Lauda, just to name a couple of them. They would go on to win the touring series again in 73 and 77. Fun little fact, Burkhart began collecting wine from towns of the tracks that he won races at. He was winning races and collecting so much wine along the way, he decided to turn it into a business, Alpina Wines. After their championship winning season in 77, they decided to go out on top and leave the racing scene in order to focus on their road car efforts. Up until then, Alpina had only offered modifications to largely unchanged BMWs, but that wasn't good enough for old Burkhart. You see, he started thinking crazy thoughts. What if instead of using the four cylinder engine in the Z3 series, we put in a six cylinder? Oh my God, that's, that's a good idea, right you guys? Yeah, that's a great idea. That's a better idea than my grandma's lasagna. I too am an Italian American, only unlike the journalist, I'm an automotive engineer. Alpina continued to work hand in hand with BMW making their own versions of certain models that were available brand new from Alpina themselves. BMW would basically build the car's skeleton, I know, it sounds scary, and then send it directly to Alpina for completion, similar to how Roof worked with Porsche in those early days. Check out our episode on Roof to learn more about another super successful German car company. But don't do it now, keep watching. In 1978, Alpina released their first complete road car based on the E21 3 Series, the B6 2.8. <laughs> They took the 2.8 liter inline six from a five series and crammed it under the hood of a three series. Using classic meticulous German engineering, they massaged a pretty dang good for its day 200 Hertz out of the mighty six banger. They took out the standard four speed and replaced it with the five speed. The suspension was upgraded. The brakes were upgraded. Recaro and Momo interior stuff with red gauge needles and a speedometer that goes higher than a normal one, of course, because the car goes faster. You gotta tell how much. And for the first time ever, the world was lucky enough to lay its collective eyes on Alpina's signature multi-spoke wheels. <laughs> zipped to 60 in 6.9 seconds and lit the BMW community of the 70s on fire! Alpina had gone from changing carbs and crankshafts to putting their greasy German fingers on the entire car. Not only were the modified beamers faster than their mothership counterparts, they handled better, stopped better, and were much more luxurious and comfortable to drive. They were also pretty recognizable with their chin spoiler, unique and optional body decals, and of course, those gorgeous Alpina 20 spoke wheels, which is pretty much the same way that you can spot an Alpina today. They also released the B7 Turbo and Turbo Coupe based on the E12 5 Series and E24 6 Series. I want one so bad. I want one so bad. Think of a thing that you want. Now double it. That's not even half as bad as I want one. As the name suggests, they turboed that hog and squeezed 296 Herspers and 341 pound feet of torque out of her in 1978. Sorry, the B7 Alpina took a plain Jane 5 series and aimed it squarely between the eyes of the big dogs. Those big dogs behind the bulldog Lamborghini and the horse dog Ferrari and Alpina didn't miss. The B7 was not only quick enough to be in the same conversation, it was luxurious enough to intrigue prospective exotic buyers as well. They kept juicing up BMWs through the 70s and into the 80s, gaining traction along the way. So much traction, in fact, that in 1983, the German Federal Motor Transport Authority certified Alpina as an actual auto manufacturer. 
From this point forward, every car they made would get a unique VIN and would be registered as an Alpina, not as a BMW. Even though it's still mostly, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, an, it's, a, it's still a BMW. You can be serviced at BMW dealerships, but it's definitely 100% not a BMW. Pretty much it is, but it's sort of not. 1987 Alpina decided to re-enter racing in everyone's favorite class, the German DTM series. They entered their race version of the B6 3.5 based on an E30 M3 that they stuck a six cylinder engine into. And this was way before BMW was putting sixes in the M3 from the factory. Alpina would basically go off to their crazy garage and put this motor into the chassis. And if the combo was successful, BMW would follow suit with the production cars. It's kind of like an R&D thing. They only raced for about a year this time and decided again to focus on their road car offerings. And focus they did. The 80s and 90s brought us some of the coolest Alpinas based on the best that BMW had to offer. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go do some fantasy shopping, <laughs> bud. B3s, B6s, B7s, B10s, 11s, and 12s. The hits just kept coming. And the formula was always the same. Make it powerful and make it a pleasure to drive and probably make it green or blue with some freaking sweet stripes on it. Give it an aggressive front lip, put some 20 spoke wheels on it and stitch the lavalini leather together with some of that good old thick blue and green thread. Look, Alpina hasn't strayed from the formula since day one. It's simple, Burkhart says, his vision was driven by a quote from Oscar Wilde. I am a man of simple tastes. I am always satisfied with the best. So Burkhardt built the best and the best kept getting better. And these days it's the best it's ever been. Alpina's quality over quantity mentality serves them well. They can focus on making a small number of vehicles to the highest standard every year. They're selling around 2000 cars per year. That's probably a reason that BMW is willing to let Alpina swim in their special sauce. They're small when compared to the automotive giant and they have no plans of cranking up those sales numbers. The exclusivity of an Alpina is part of what makes the company so successful and the cars so desirable. And their current lineup is looking pretty freaking desirable, dudes. The upcoming B3 bike turbo wagon is maybe one of the sickest wagons, nay? Sickest vehicles ever created. It's based on the G33 series and it makes 462 horsepower and 516 Turks shooting the estate to 186 miles per hour. That's basically the M3 wagon that BMW won't freaking make. And America will probably never get even if they did. Add it to the list. If you're more of an SUV person, fear not because Alpina has you covered with a version of the X3, the XD3, capable of zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds and maybe capable of going off-road even a little bit. Then there's the big dog, one of the biggest dogs in production today in terms of power, luxury, and exclusivity. The 2020 Alpina B7. But just because this Great Dane is big, don't think he can't run. I can run a 425-40 right now in vans. Challenge me in the comments, I will race anybody. The B7 has 608 horsepower and 590 pound feet on tap that can rocket the country on wheels to 60 in 3.6 seconds. That's fast for a car that weighs almost 5,000 pounds. And even more impressive, the V7 takes the crown as the world's fastest production sedan by getting up to a blistering 205 miles per hour. The interior is so plush. It's like crawling inside of a giant beanie baby. And it better be because it costs about $170,000. You could sell one of them Princess Diana bears and buy one of these and still have like 30 grand left over. Good news too, the B7 is available in the United States. BMW actually buys back the Alpinas and sells them directly through their dealer networks. So tell Jeeves to head to the dealership and get your name on the list. Or just drool over these things for a few hours in front of your computer with no shirt on like I do. I love you.